coach, Polly C, team leader, coach, Northwest Market Center, Austin, Texas. There we go. All right, so today I want to talk about the number one thing that stops people from creating better conversations, from carrying better conversations and closing them, whether you're prospecting or you're presenting. Resistance, right? That resistance that we get when people, uh, when we're on the phone, we're at an open house, we're uh, door knocking, we're networking, that resistance that reflexively comes, that immediately comes, that always comes, and our inability to move through it because we don't want to be salesy, because we don't know what to say. First off, though, let's think about where we're at in the process and understanding where we're at helps us move through that. I got a tool for you and I got a strategy for you, so we're going to look at all three. So first off is awareness, mindset and understanding where we're at in the process of resistance. First off, we have reflexive resistance. And reflexive resistance is that immediate knee-jerk response when you walk into a department store, a salesperson walks up to you, can I help you? And then you reflexively respond, no, just looking. That's right, I'm just looking. And hey, that's called okay. Because um, naturally as human beings, we want to slow down the sales process because we're not ready yet. That's their, their first part in the script. So when you get that reflexive no, it's called okay. I'm going to give you a, um, a tool here to use in a minute, a skill to use to move through resistance. But reflexive resistance always comes. Second, we have reactive. And reactive resistance is when they're thinking now, right? Because we had resistance without thinking. And now we have resistance with thinking. They haven't hung up the phone yet. They haven't closed the door on your door knocking. They haven't ran out of your open house, right? They haven't abandoned you at the networking event. And so they're still resisting you, um, but they're, uh, um, they're, still, they're thinking, but they're still resisting you, okay? Now, the third, the third part is responsive. And responsive resistance is when they're um, resisting, but with hesita they're, they're hesitating, right? There's some, a little bit of acceptance there. They're hesitating, but they're still resisting. So it's like this, uh, call me later, send me an email. Maybe we can talk in a couple of weeks, send me something. And so um, that responsive resistance is resistance with hesitation. Now look guys, this is where we go from amateur to pro because the amateurs have no idea what to say. They haven't even thought about it. They don't take it seriously in regards to their sales talk. And so your one tool that I'm about to give you in a minute will help you move through that reflexive and reactive resistance to get to the responsive so that I can have better communication at a higher level, right? And connect with people so that I can earn trust faster and move through to serve people, serve more people, serve at a higher level we're going to jump into that tool. All right, so let's look at that tool that will help us move through resistance, okay? Now, you're coming to Power Hour. You've seen this before a few times, okay? Now, if you're an agent in the Austin, Texas area, come to Power Hour. It's a live-action workshop on becoming a powerful communicator so that you can serve at a high level. And this one tool is the cornerstone of what we teach. And so the first is repeat. I need to repeat what they say. I need to approve what they say. And then I need to move to a great question. I need to repeat, approve, move. The RAM method will absolutely help you move through any forms of resistance, whether you're prospecting or presenting. And so what am I repeating? Well, what they just said, paraphrased in some um, manner. I need to make sure that they know that I hear them. They need to know that I'm on the same side as them, even if what I think they said is ridiculous. Sometimes that happens. And then I need to move on to a good questions because questions control. And when you ask great questions, you control the conversation and you allow them to own some of the ideas versus you just verbally vomiting all over them what you think or what you feel. Guess what? Nobody cares. I know you amiables. That was tough. But this is about what they think. And when you want to serve at a high level, you'll, you'll dig into what they think and feel. So it looks like this. Somebody says, well, hey, I'm already working with an agent. Great. You're already with an agent. I can appreciate that. I understand. I, in fact, it, I'd be surprised if you didn't know an agent. And um, let me ask you, um, how do you feel about some information that I could provide that could possibly save you $5,000 on the transaction? Would that be unreasonable to share with you? Do weekends or weekdays work better? And so I make sure that they, that, they, that, I, that they know that I hear them. I'm on the same side of them and we're moving on to great questions. Now, what's the next best question? Well, that 
in the next part we're going to look at for um, what, how do we ask great questions. Now, you know asking great questions is about scripts, but there's another little strategy here that we're going to get to to make sure that you continue this process and move fluently and fluidly, comfortably and confidently through these conversations, whether they're initial and you're prospecting or you're beginning to develop that trust and you're at a presentation or you may even be using this technique when you get a funky home inspection or an appraisal and you need to talk your seller or buyer down from the ledge with some repeat approved move. Love to see you guys here in Austin, Texas for that power hour we do every morning all week long. All right, we're going to jump into that strategy for being able to ask better questions. Okay, so the strategy for asking better questions is a very simple little equation that I've, I've uh, drawn up on Think Feel. So um, I'm going to ask better questions on what they think and what they feel. And I'm going to tie those to rewards or risks. Okay? Okay, I'm going to ask better think field questions tied to, to risks or rewards. Now, look, I said there's great questions in a script book, the poly, the um, uh, Northwest, uh, the playbook. <laughs> I got different playbooks in different places. So the playbook will allow you to ask better questions. And there's tons of scripts out there for you to ask great questions. And look, get over this. Uh, I, don't, I don't do scripts and I don't want to sound scripted. Great. Learn the script so that you have great concepts and ideas internalized so that those words and those concepts and ideas can be yours and you can ask even better questions. But sometimes I'm not really sure what the next best question is and I get a little tied up with that because when I repeat and approve and I move, what's that next best question? So you can always use this equation, what do they think, what do they feel tied to a reward or a risk. And uh, it could be, hey, I'm already working with an agent and um, I'm not really in need of your services. Um, we're standing at the open house, right? And I, I repeat and approve and move. And I say, hey, look, I can appreciate it. You, um, you're working with another agent. And you had mentioned that you hadn't yet signed a buyer rep agreement with them. So I understand you have somebody helping you. And the fact that you're even in the process working with an agent says to me that you're serious about getting a great deal. So that's awesome. And um, look, let me ask you a question. Um, what do you think about a second opinion that would allow you to be able to save uh, $5,000 on this property? Or how do you feel about um, taking a look at what a full service brokerage like mine could do to make sure that you avoided um, not being able to get the best deal possible? Think, feel, tied to a risk or a reward allows you to ask better question. What do you think about? How do you feel? tied to a risk or reward. You can use this equation. You can use th these strategies. And when you know where you're at in the resistance process, that'll allow you to move through because you're salesperson, you're stranger. Mama said, don't talk to strangers. And look, we all know where salespeople rank on the trustability scale. So I'm looking to earn trust faster. And so repeating and approving and moving at a high level, asking great questions, that's what's gonna allow you to connect with people so that you can serve at a higher level. So much, so much, so much. Love you guys. Talk to you soon.